In this episode, I'm going to present some amazing, uh, precious images just discovered by me this morning um, by Kerry Cassidy. And they will give us a good insight about uh, the world of the builders of uh, Gebekli Tepe, or at least the world of some of those who used it. Pay attention at the intricate hairstyle of this uh, lady, or maybe a man, probably a lady. Does it resemble the hairstyle and sophistication of uh, the people that the mainstream historians assure us were using this site? Look at the haircut we see in the museum and the haircut that we see, uh, I mean hairstyle that we see on the ancient artifact. And yet another lady with a lovely sophisticated uh, decoration and hairstyling on her head. Doesn't look like a berry pickers and uh, root gatherers from the forest to me. And yet the mainstream um, so-called historians assure us that it is exactly those hillbillies that uh, built Gebekli Tepe. All the images in this episode are from the newly opened uh, museum at the very site of uh, Gebekli Tepe in Turkey. Kindly brought to us by the Camelot lady, uh, Kerry Cassidy. And as far as I gather from uh, her uh, statements, these are all artifacts found at the very site. This is amazing. Look at this angel. Look at this celestial art. And aren't uh, those... Um, Star Wars costume, just the perfect ones for hunting in the forest and gathering roots driven by hunger. Not to mention the wings. I wonder if they were getting entangled in the branches as the hunter-gatherers were swirling in between the trees, hunting and searching for berries. Some of the faces we see are clearly reminiscent of the faces of the sphinxes found on the gates of the so-called uh, Hittite sites. So, apparently Gebekli Tepe is not uh, some sort of isolated site at all, as we have been assured so far. This face unmistakably belongs uh, to the people that um, predated, f from whom the Hittites uh, inherited their uh, sites with the megalithic bases that we saw in the previous episodes. So they uh, were those uh, before the Hittites, or another possibility is that they were the teachers of uh, the Hittites and they were mixing with them and teaching them various magical things. Now many of the animals depicted on the site and on these artifacts that we see in the nearby museum are easily recognizable and are a part of the fauna around us, while many others are clearly prehistoric animals, or at least animals that uh, we now call prehistoric. Well, first of all, there will be a full episode in my uh, video series called The Survivors of Atlantis and Hyperborea, or When the Survivors of Atlantis and Hyperborea Wake Up, on the topic uh, that the so-called uh, prehistoric times, including all the prehistoric uh, animals, they lived uh, much closer to us in time than we are um, led to believe uh, by the modern so-called science. Or at least uh, it uh, probably ended uh, much uh, later. Uh, I don't have any clue or hypothesis how long did it uh, last altogether, because as uh, I have explained in another video, all the uh, scientific dating uh, methods are uh, on very, very shaky grounds and are uh, mostly guesses and hypotheses uh, mixed with uh, pure fantasy. 
And um, as with uh, many other ancient uh, sites, so is the case with uh, Gebekli Tepe. The images uh, for all kinds of uh, reptilian and snake-like uh, creatures are really abundant and uh, consist a great percentage of the uh, total amount of images found. Why such obsession with uh, these uh, snake-like creatures? Actually, it will look an obsession only if we look through the lens of uh, what current so-called uh, history is filling our heads with and if we look it through the eyes of the people who created this art, they were just uh, depicting scenes from their lives. So it wasn't an obsession, it was uh, just uh, very common. Somehow the uh, reptilian uh, species, uh, both in our dimensions and also uh, in uh, terms of uh, communication with other dimensions uh, in which the ancient people are much more capable than us, this uh, presence of such uh, creatures uh, was... Uh, uh, rather um, tangible and so they depicted uh, what they saw. Also I think it may have to do with the fact that, um, well for me it's a fact, uh, for others it uh, would be probably a hypothesis, that uh, before uh, the human race was the dominant race on our planet that there were extreme uh, times of extreme antiquity when uh, reptilian creatures of uh, great uh, intelligence and culture were inhabited, uh, were inhabiting our home planet. I will elaborate on that hypothesis in some other video, uh, but please uh, don't think that um, uh, all uh, reptilian creatures are uh, uh, bad in the same way as uh, we humans currently are very destructive and horrible species cutting the branch that we stand on, destroying our uh, mother earth, raping it up and down, but this is just a collective thing. Uh, even while that's going on, amongst us, they are really angelic beings as individuals. So what I'm getting at is uh, that we should uh, try to uh, reach some sort of uh, sophistication and stop seeing the world in terms of uh, white and uh, black only. There are many shades in between them and not only shades between white and black, there are many even other colors. There are some uh, also strange uh, designs or maybe some uh, um, uh, owls or uh, robots or uh, what is it? Here we see uh, a cross, something like the Qatar cross. Was uh, Gebekli Tepe still uh, used even uh, within the time of Christ, which according to uh, my timeline was uh, 1000 years ago. That would raise the question of, uh, you know, again, the timing of the Great uh, Flood or one of the Great Floods. It seems that there is a really good chance that we had one uh, such Great Flood even after Christ. Another artifact uh, with uh, even more Christian uh, looking uh, cross, but again those elements on the upper uh, chakras or uh, whatever discs, uh, some depictions, those are very ancient and are even found on the walls of uh, the s underground cities in uh, Cappadocia, which uh, seem for me to be the most ancient uh, dwellings that we have uh, access to, but again, who knows, maybe they were carved later on. It is uh, really curious, uh, were these artifacts found, um, uh, exactly the, the location where they were found, uh, was it just next to this uh, big pillars, the emblem of Gebekli Tepe, or is it in the area in which uh, geological layer were they found? Uh, really, these photos raise many, many questions. On one side uh, we see 
uh, artifacts, depictions that uh, we would uh, usually classify as something coming from Iran and next to them uh, we see a statue with a writing to what could be classified as uh, ancient uh, Greek or ancient uh, Slavic script. They are all very similar. But um, all this Iranian classification is also a label that should be used with caution because we saw similar artifacts in South and North America in my video on the uh, untold history of America. Yet something else uh, looks uh, very much uh, Thracian or uh, Roman style. It's uh, also beautiful masterpiece. These are uh, precious artifacts, uh, pride for uh, the human race. Kerry Cassidy shared not only the photos but also her um, astral uh, visions and um, Akashic information that uh, she claims to have uh, received on the spot while viewing the artifacts uh, on the very site of uh, uh, Gebekli Tepe and this uh, amazing new museum. And uh, what uh, she uh, shared from her uh, visions was uh, that indeed there was an indigenous uh, tribe. Maybe it wasn't uh, that uncombed as uh, they're showing us in this uh, museum, uh, whatever dolls that uh, they have uh, made on the very artifacts, we see much more sophistication. But in any case, they were in uh, indigenous and uh, relatively not so advanced. And then there was uh, this other part. Uh, they were uh, in connection with uh, highly advanced uh, beings. I think uh, that m must have been the angel that we saw in uh, the very beginning. I mean, one of them. And these advanced uh, beings, they established a portal uh, for uh, communication between uh, our and their spheres of existence, or maybe even other spheres as well, in general. Something uh, what uh, the kids nowadays would call um, teleportation canal or gate. And that was uh, used uh, both by the angelic race and also some of uh, the indigenous uh, shamans who were um, trained in uh, using uh, this uh, method of travel. I don't think uh, every astral vision should uh, be taken um, as uh, absolute truth or as uh, surely true or uh, true in every each uh, detail uh, but at least what i'm getting at is that uh, her vision is much closer and much more confirmed by the uh, artifacts found on the spot uh, than the wild uh, fantasies of uh, the official historical academic establishment it's also gracefully coherent, for example, with uh, the uh, now scientific research of um, um, the Farsight Institute, for example, on uh, the Pyramid of Giza. Over there, the remote viewers also saw two types of uh, people. Um, first, the indigenous uh, population engaged in agricultural pursuits something like uh, what we usually see uh, in the museums and then a connection with uh, another uh, race that is uh, uh, more technologically advanced than ourselves and uh, capable of interdimensional travel. And yet another theme that is very common for, for other ancient sites are something what looks to me like uh, sperms there on the walls of the ancient Egyptian temple. Was it in Dendera? 
although people were not supposed to, to be uh, have been able to see such things without microscopes in those uh, primitive uh, times. Uh, and also on the disk found in Ecuador, I personally believe that um, such depictions are common for the sites that have a connection with um, other advanced uh, races is because uh, exactly those uh, races were uh, tampering with our uh, genetics on many instances and on many sites around the globe. It, it is uh, just a regular practice. That's why such uh, depictions are so common. This scene could uh, have some relevance to it, for example. Now, Kerry Cassidy also pointed our attention towards some uh, strange holes on the site of Quebec Litipé that are also s similar holes are found in Malta. Why? Another excellent uh, question that she points out is uh, why such an uh, awkward uh, shaped uh, huge stone uh, pillars were uh, made. I mean, uh, they're in such a precarious condition, topsy-heavy, as if they were looking for some very rational form and suitable for a building that we want to last long. Well, Kerry's answer is that uh, they were a part of this uh, Stargate uh, system. They were vibrating with uh, unknown uh, to us uh, energies and were supported uh, upright by those energies. Another interesting uh, detail that uh, we heard uh, from her for the first time is that uh, there is a, a extensive underground uh, canal system uh, on the site of uh, Gebek Litipe, yet another common feature with um, other megalithic sites around uh, the world, many of them, too many of them. Gebek Litipe seems like an isolated case, less and less. Excavation works at uh, Quebec Litipe are going on uh, very, very slowly. Just a small group of uh, uh, German archaeologists uh, come now and then, or maybe some other groups. Uh, very, very limited. And uh, is it really excavation or some sort of uh, tidying uh, the site, as some others report? It's not uh, really clear, is there any further research uh, being done? And that uh, contradicts uh, all logic, I mean, at least uh, it contradicts uh, the attitude that they uh, claim that they have, uh, which is to uh, find out as much as possible about this uh, amazing uh, uh, world heritage uh, site. I mean, uh, this is a site of uh, global importance. You don't find uh, such uh, amazing uh, artifacts, moreover, with uh, such a variety and so rich in information uh, just anywhere. So if really the so-called uh, science was about uh, trying to find out the truth of our past, there should have been uh, uh, large swarms of archaeologists uh, working there, while we see uh, almost no work uh, done at all. Despite the fact that it has been confirmed that this is a large uh, complex of uh, many stone circles and other types of uh, buildings that uh, we know uh, nothing about yet because uh, they are uh, uh, just uh, detected with uh, uh, rather underground. 
So there is a good reason to believe that uh, unimaginable treasures are buried there, uh, waiting for us, and uh, yet uh, we see silence. Why is that so? Uh, well, I can tell you the answer that uh, Carrie Cassidy suggests. She suggests that uh, when this uh, Stargate uh, complex is unearthed, it will start uh, functioning and uh, there will be amazing exchange of uh, knowledge and maybe even travel, which is unacceptable uh, for those who manage the archaeological uh, works nowadays and that is why the site stays unexplored. Very similar story circles about the cap of the Great uh, Pyramid in Giza. Some say that uh, they have removed it and they are not placing it because uh, if it is uh, placed uh, there it will start functioning actually and that would be quite amazing.